It is Tech Tuesday and we are getting some advice ahead of Black Friday as Americans get ready to snag the deals on the latest devices. And we cannot call it a Black Friday without talking about the droves of shoppers yeah. trying to bring home those big screen TVs. <laughs> Joining us live to educate us on what to look for if you are shopping this year is our tech expert Greg Nibbler. Good morning, Greg. Good morning. Yeah, a lot of people looking to buy TVs right now and so I figured I'd tackle one of the biggest questions that I get, and it has to do with acronyms that you see. There's so many acronyms on televisions, but one of the biggest questions is, what is the difference between QLED, QLED, and OLED, OLED, especially when you're looking for a, a mid to higher tier television? So here's what it comes down to, a very basic summation. So QLED is an LCD television. So it's what we're used to having, what we've had for a long time. It's the same kind of technology we've had, but they've added a filter on it that allows for quantum dots, which essentially makes the television brighter. You get brighter colors. It looks really good from the angles if you want to see it from the side. Also, if you have a room with a lot of uh, brightness in it, like a lot of sunlight, say, and you want a television that can overpower that, QLED's a good television for that. Mm -hmm. OLED is a different kind of technology altogether. So it's actually something that provides for millions of little pixels that turn on and off on their own, which provides for amazing contrast because you can turn it off you can get an actually a, a perfect black, which means the pixel next to it then stands out a little bit more. So you see things that you wouldn't normally see when you're watching a television program. Like say there's a lot of like dark background stuff. There could be things going on in there you just can't see on your current television. So an OLED is going to allow you to do that with that great contrast. Huh. Boy, I'm glad you understand all of this stuff because usually <laughs> when I go look for a TV, it's like, oh, that looks good. I think I'll get it. And right. can I plug my computer That's a good way to it? do it too. I look at them, I'm like, well, they all look better than the TV I have. But now, so Greg, I was wondering, I've heard that Black Friday isn't always the best time of year to buy a right. TV. So can weigh in on this debate. Yeah, I mean, there's there's people that say that, that really it comes down to there's there's three really good times to get televisions. Uh, one of them is right around Super Bowl. Uh, one of them is in the spring when the new models come out. But Black Friday is still a great time to get a good deal. Are they going to be better? I mean, you could be looking at, you know, pennies or dollars compared to what you could get around Super Bowl. Maybe there's a great deal that happens then, but there could be a great deal happening now, too. So I would say kind of pick out what you want. And if the price is good, just go ahead and get it. Because mm. Black Friday, there, there are going to be some good savings around Okay, now. so if it's on somebody's Christmas list, now is yeah. the time yeah. to buy. All right. Just TV, get it. TV is a good gift. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got enough TVs, but if somebody gave me another one, I'd be happy with You'd it. You'd find a spot for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about the dog phone. There, apparently, there's a researcher who has developed a way for her dog to call her while at yeah, work. This, uh, my yeah, question is, is a... why? <laughs> why not? <laughs> well, that's a good question I don't think I can answer. Uh, but there, it is, comes from a, a woman at the University of Glasgow. So what happened was, you know, she was at home during lockdown with her dog all the time, really enjoyed that time. And then she went back to work and she thought about all the different tech that we have to like look in at dogs, but she was wondering if she could teach her dog to use tech. So she created this ball with a sensor in it where when the dog moves the ball, it triggers a laptop to start a video call and the dog calls her. So then she can interact and, you know, the dog will see her image pop up and she can talk to the dog. And she wanted to see if she could actually train it to do it. And she's still not entirely sure, but the dog did start to do it around the same time every day. And then, you know, would, would see her in the, in the laptop. And she said it was great until somewhere down the line, the dog decided to just stop doing it. And so then she said she'd start panicking that something was wrong. So it kind of went the opposite direction. Nothing was wrong. Just the dog didn't want to do it. So it's an interesting way just to see if dogs are using tech. So that's that's kind of what I wanted to talk about. I'm curious if anybody would use this. Like Emily, I know you've got a dog. Would you would you have your dog call in? Yeah, I think it'd be fun to teach Samwise to make a phone call. But I also think it could backfire because I think if he's bored at home, he would just try to call me every five minutes. So yeah, I don't there's know. that too. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe lose interest like this dog did. Right? So, maybe oh, right? Maybe it was just else. a cool toy, and then and then he got bored exactly. and moved on. Exactly. I don't know. Uh, okay, so I love this story too. Rolls Royce is shattering the air record for an electric plane. We talked a lot about electric cars, but we got electric planes now too. Yeah, electric planes are kind of the big goal, but the problem is, you know, the batteries are really heavy. But they're saying that they're on the road and that they've. Yeah, now uh, shattered this record. It's 330 some miles per hour that they just went, which is about 120 miles over the previous record. But that's really fast. 
for an electric plane. And it's part of Rolls-Royce's plan to be uh, to have net zero emissions with, with air vehicles by 2050, which is a, a bold goal to have. They said the batteries in this are enough to charge 7,500 smartphones. So that's a lot of cells in there. And, uh, and yeah, they're saying this is just kind of the first stepping stone toward getting there to having actual, you know, steady commercial travel with electric vehicles. But first you gotta, you know, break some airspeed records to get some attention. Wow. Yeah, we're getting there though. I is mean, it, is it quiet there. though? I wonder, cause you know how quiet electric yeah, cars yeah. are? Is this a quieter plane? That's a good point. Actually, I'm not entirely sure. I, I'll have to go, I have to check on that. I know, I wanna so. check it out. I'm intrigued. Yeah. yeah interesting well you just have to wear your you know your earbuds while you're that's true flying you do want to yes. have that on anyway yeah uh greg <laughs> thank you for the rundown uh happy thanksgiving to you you have a good holiday yeah same to you too